Hey guys, welcome back to FDD Speaks. Here's another video that was suggested to me. This one is of a, a Christian pastor and professor who converted to Islam. Ho, ho, ho. You've all heard of scores of people converting to Islam in recent times, yeah. especially Christians, right? However, we hardly come across instances when a Christian missionary discovers the truth about Islam and accepts it. Well, in this video, we will be going over one such instance, an American woman based in California named Mary Sue Malvar, or more commonly known as Khadija Watson. So it began with having a BA and an MA in theology. Khadija Watson was a licensed Christian missionary who spent seven years oh, preaching Christianity Christian in the missionary. Philippines. Never in her wildest dreams could she think that one day she would end up becoming a Muslim as she was taught that Islam was satanic and demonic. So what happened that made her question her deep-rooted beliefs? While she was studying church history, she came to know that the concept of Trinity was introduced 325 years after the passing of Jesus Christ. Regarding this, she went to her professors bearing questions. Unfortunately, their explanations didn't satisfy her. Khadija also wondered that if the teachings of Christianity were true, why weren't they making any difference to society, which was only getting worse day by day. Anyhow, moving on. During her time as a missionary in the Philippines, where she worked as a professor in two colleges, she also enrolled in a German language class. There she made acquaintance with a Filipino, whose kindness and gentleness really impressed her. He always carried a plastic bag along that contained coins, he used to distribute these coins to the beggars in the street. Khadija later found out that this Filipino guy was a Muslim convert from Christianity. In the same classroom, there was a Filipina Muslim convert as well, who had also given up Christianity for Islam. Sister Khadija says, I could not believe I had met two Christians in one week who had become Muslims, especially a woman. I was under the impression, like so many Westerners, that Islam considered women second-class citizens and that their husbands locked them up and beat them. The Filipina introduced Khadija to the beauty of Islam and how, in reality, it is a liberator of women and provides protection to their rights. Khadija soon realized that it is actually the Western society that mistreats women. In the United States, every four minutes, a woman is beaten by her spouse or partner so badly that she needs to go to the emergency room. In the UK, the same thing happens every two minutes. These statistics are based on reported cases only. So as soon as Khadija opened up her eyes to facts, she felt a sudden stirring in her heart. She wondered if she had been wrong about Islam all along. Khadija began to pray, asking the Lord to show her signs if Islam is wrong. The Filipina that Khadija had met in the German language class suggested her visit the Islamic Center. Accordingly, she went there and was shocked by the approach of the Muslims. Khadija says, As a missionary, I was familiar with many evangelical strategies and methods. These Muslims used nothing. There was no harassment, no psychological manipulation, and no subliminal suggestion. They simply gave me some books and told me they would answer any questions I had. Following their instructions, Khadija went home and read those books. It was the first time she had read books about Islam written by Muslims. Earlier, all the books that she had read were authored by Christians. Hmm. She was <laughs> astonished to find out that Allah is one, the omnipotent, and the omnipresent. Khadija says, There was no go-between, no priest. I went back to the Islamic center the very next day and guess what? They gave me more books. So after spending hours in reading and having more than 15 discussions, Khadija came to the conclusion that the Holy Quran is indeed authentic. Khadija says that the Bible has more than 66 books, 40 authors, and was written in various languages, whereas the Holy Quran is one and only and has not changed unlike the Bible. Fully convinced of the truth of Islam, she uttered her shahada and became a Muslim. Regarding the name Khadija, she says that she chose this name because, like Khadija, I was a widow. 
I embraced Islam at about the same age as she was when she converted. I also have nine children as she had. Wow. Moving on. Khadija's nine conversion children. to Islam evoked disappointing reactions from her family and friends and colleagues. She was fired from her teaching job, rejected by her former classmates, professors and co-pastors, and suspected by her own country's government. Her in-laws, who were based in the Philippines and had a very cordial relationship with her even after the death of her husband, completely abandoned her. Her children, on the other hand, had an emergency meeting, devising a plan on how to bring their mother back to her senses. When they first saw Khadija in an abaya and a hijab, they were shocked and told her that she resembled an extremist. Khadija's 18-year-old son, however, became a Muslim later on, something which Khadija couldn't believe. She says, He was so into music and dating and was not ready for any kind of religion. I used to leave books for him to read, but I found them untouched. But I prayed a lot for him and all my children to become Muslim. Later, when he converted to Islam, he confessed that he had read all the books and kept me from knowing. He was the one who went to Mecca first. When he came back, he told me excitedly, Mom, you will love Saudi Arabia. All the women dress like you. Anyway, Sister Khadija later enrolled as a teacher at Al-Hamra Islamic Education Foundation in Jeddah where she began preaching Islam. She says that she is so grateful to Allah for being a Muslim and prays that she may live and die a Muslim. Khadija Watson passed away at the age of 75 in Saudi Arabia on July 16, 2018. Mm. She leaves behind a lasting legacy through her dawa, charity work and compassion. She continues to be an inspiration for every Muslim to this day. May Allah accept her and forgive all her mistakes. Amin. Okay, this Christian missionary and uh, professor uh, had a pretty similar background to a lot of these reverse stories that we've been uh, seeing. And uh, the video is so right. We've been seeing more and more and more of these stories pop up. And uh, unfortunately though, she has passed away uh, some years ago, but either way, her story still lives on, her legacy lives on. And having nine children, that's a whole lot of children. My grandma on my mom's side had 11 children. So yeah, I have a lot of aunts and uncles. So uh, that, <laughs> I, I, I'm just thinking like, you know, imagine having nine children, you know, that's a, that's a lot. For me, three sounds like a lot of children. But either way, yeah, you know, like the similar theme pops up again. For her, Islam just had an answer for what she was looking for. And that's really it. You know, there's various different versions of the Bible in various different uh, languages that is translated in. And uh, a lot of times somebody can quote a particular passage from uh, the Bible, let's say, and, uh, and you look in another Bible and it's like, hey, but it's actually not there in this version. So what's, what's really going on there? And uh, for a lot of people, that that is a big thing that they that they deal with. It's just there's so many differences and variations in the Bible. So when they see the Quran, they're like, oh, okay. Well, if I check this Quran, it's gonna say that. If I check that Quran, it's gonna say that. If I check this Quran, it's gonna say that. Oh, okay. Well, this is simple. It's easier for my brain to 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 handle it. it it's simplified. Plus, when I ask questions, there's an answer for that. Wow. So guys, this is a big theme that I've been seeing when I've been reacting to these revert stories is that people look for simplicity when it comes to religion, not confusion, simplicity. And for some reason, people are finding this a lot more in Islam. And then what follows is that people's views about the religion actually change. They say, well, you know, I thought Islam was this, that, this, and that, that, and this. And people are like, really? It's actually not. It's, it's the complete opposite of what I thought. And what happens is people start to distinguish, okay, that was just somebody that may have done a bad thing, but that's actually not what Islam teaches. So their perspectives start to change. Their whole view about the religion start to change. And then from there, their life changes because they found something brand new and with this woman of course it is understandable like if she is 
on a missionary trip or she's working with a Christian organization and now she's Islam and no longer teaching Christianity, of course she would lose that position because she no longer supports the, the vision of that institution or organization. So that for me 100% makes sense. It, it didn't sound harsh at all. What did seem a little bit harsh though was just how her her colleagues and, and friends and family started to just shun her. And I understand, I get where her family's coming from, where they had a meeting and trying to get her back to her senses. Of course, which uh, caring and loving family wouldn't do that? If they think that what you're doing is harmful and you may be misled, of course they're gonna wanna come and support you, but at the same time, you know, the mistreatment of people, that, that shouldn't be the case. Yes, speak if you're close to them, your relative, for sure. Speak to them, try to counsel them and whatnot. But at the end of the day, they still, you still gotta allow them to do what they are gonna do when it comes to their religion. Also, as you can see, her son converted to Islam just uh, based off of her influence. And she wasn't forcing him, she was just leaving him some literature, like, hey, you know, check it out yourself. That's another big thing that I notice in these revert videos, is that other people are impacted a lot when somebody isn't pushy with their religious beliefs. It's okay, I'm gonna share the information with you. Here's a resource that you can check out for yourself. And you know, the, the, the literature and the words and the Quran itself does the work. There's, there's really no forcing when it comes to this. Oh, you have to convert because you're my son. No, no, that didn't happen at all. It was just, he came from his own accord. And that there is the juice of it all. <laughs> if I can use that term, the juice. I don't know anybody that says that. The juice of the matter is that they came to Islam of their own accord. Just somebody helped pave the way for them and they embraced it themselves. All right, so very inspiring story. I, I think for anyone that watches it, whether you're Muslim or not, I think we can take a lot of lessons um, from this. And I also really hope that nobody takes this as a condemnation for anyone who follows uh, Christianity. Not necessarily the case. What I was doing was just highlighting some of the common themes that I hear people mention when it comes to why they convert from Christianity to Islam. Just some of the things among many other things cause a person to change their religion. So yeah, it's just something also for Christians to look into themselves as well. Either way, that's it for me guys. Thanks for hanging out with me in another episode and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later. Uh.